Hello and indeed welcome to Test Drive, the first impressions web series with me, Liam Richardson from Diamination.co.uk. This week we'll play Matt's Pain 3, which has just been released on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 here in the UK, and it's coming to the PC later on in the year. And uh, yeah, I'm trying something a little bit different here. I've recorded this footage yesterday, and I'm talking over it the day after. And I feel that if I'm not doing it live, like I normally do, I won't get distracted by actually playing the game, and I'll be able to go into more detail, you know, about the game play and my impressions, which is probably better for you. So we'll see how this does. Leave a comment if you prefer this to my usual stuff. So yeah, this is Max Payne 3, and I am really enjoying it. As I say, I'm about three hours in. Uh, the footage in the background is around chapter three, so don't worry about spoilers. I've just chosen it because I think it shows off a lot of the tall game play and also some of the stylistic qualities of the cutscenes and it'll just allow me to, you know, have visual elements to what I'm talking about. So, yes I'm enjoying it. It's really, really good. It's not fantastic, you know, it's not the best game Rockstar I've ever put out but I'm really, really enjoying it and it's interesting to play a linear experience from Rockstar rather than their usual, you know, sandbox style of games like GTA and Red Dead Redemption. So, yeah, it's the obviously I really like the narratives that um, Rockstar do. I thought the storyline to Red Dead Redemption was one of the best storylines in a game ever. You know, I, th I was really immersed, I really, really enjoyed it. So to have that same level of storytelling applied to a linear experience, it makes it far more prominent, you know, far more prominent part of the game. So yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it and I'm, I'm already addicted to it completely. So, uh, first point is the game's uh, style is very, very interesting and stylish. It, I must admit, it's quite in your face and quite difficult to focus on at first, as you can see from the footage in the background. You think then these weird sort of flashes, it looks like you're watching it on a TV screen. Um, obviously, I know the original two used to use a comic book style for its cutscenes, so it still displays words on the screen and, you know, it has this sort of comic book style to it. But it's got these flashes and it, it's all over the place. You know, I'm not even going to lie, it's it's all over the place. And yeah, at first it's it's almost quite nauseating, but you get used to it and it works incredibly well. There's nothing else like it out there. And then, uh, quite beautifully, I'm about to get straight on to the gameplay. So here's Matt here now. So it's just like Uncharted in terms of its third person shooting mechanics, and obviously, like Matt's pain, but you can snap to cover. Um, Yes, yeah, got some emphasis on cover, but obviously it's Matt's pain, so he likes to spend most of his time on the floor, which we're about to see here. You dive, bullet time is a very, very uh, essential part of the game player. As I said, it's very visceral as well, you know, shooting him in the face. And bullet time helps you focus more on shooting people, and uh, it's really, really fun. It's been a long time since I've played a game with bullet time in it. And this does it really, really well. And that's a nice stylistic feature as well. If the last person in the room, if you shoot him, it focuses on your bullet and it shows you exactly where you hit him. And all of these character models react exactly where you shoot them. You shoot them in the arm, they'll clutch their arm. Shoot them on top of the stairs, they'll fall down the stairs realistically. I mean, this is the Rage engine that uh, GTA and Red Dead Redemption uses. So obviously it's very, very good at handling these sort of things. So yep, just hitting these guys out. And there's Matt's popping pills. Your health is located in the right, bottom right hand side of the screen, uh, indicated by this die in the bottom right, which is the same as the er early games. You don't regenerate your health, you might be pleased to hear. At the end, it's been a long time since I've played a game where your health doesn't regenerate. It also means that it's hard as nails. I've been struggling to play this game on normal. I think later on in the footage I actually do die, uh, which I try to avoid while recording footage for videos, but I can't help it. It's a difficult game. Not in a frustrating way, you know, checkpoints are frequent. Uh, that's not been something I've had problems with at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's hard, and it's good. It's it's like playing a game from the early 2000s. It's been a long time since I've played a game that I've struggled with, apart from you know stuff like Demon Souls, where the whole purpose is to struggle. But yeah, it's not frustrating. A couple of times you'll get past it, but yeah, it's good. It's nice to play a game with a bit of challenge to it. So I think I'm just going to launch myself into bullet time here, and it's quite cool. I think I'll dispatch about five of them with all in twit succession. Uno, Das, Trez, uh, four. Yep, shoot him. Oh, there's another headshot. 
head shop. So yeah, combat, palm to playing about. Obviously, it's all you really do. I mean, there's a few variations in the way you do it. You know, sometimes you're falling off a water tower. Sometimes you're sliding down a, you know, roof. But yeah, it's, it's all very. I don't really want to say samey because even though yeah, you are doing the same thing over and over again, it doesn't really get old. It's always great fun. You know, jumping around like an idiot shooting people is great fun. Now, one of the things I want to talk about here is, as you can see, I'm now batting yet another cutscene, um, and the dame takes the reins off you frequently, very, very frequently, and some people may find that frustrating because the dame play sections are sometimes quite short, you know, you're not really playing it for that long before the dame launches you into, you know, yet another cutscene or maybe a dialogue piece. and. You know, compared to stuff like the end Red Dead Redemption and GTA, where to that to a mission, you know, you drive all the way there, and it's a very, very not very slow paced experience, but you know, you've got a lot of freedom to breathe, a lot of room to breathe. Whereas in this game, you haven't. You basically go from point A to point B. There's not much, you know, in terms of exploration. It's just from point A, point B, and then that's it. Level over. Uh, you know, like the section here. There we go, bat into yet another cutscene, and then this cutscene lasts, I believe, for like two or three minutes. So it's 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 almost on par with Metal Gear Solid in terms of that in terms of um its cutscenes and how they're used. But you know, if you're after a narrative driven piece and your gameplay you know is important but you're not really that bothered, then this is really the game for you. And I think I've been enjoying that sort of confined and linear, you know, gameplay because it's it's good. It's that more focused on the story. Max is a genuinely likable character. You know, he's he's interesting to see develop, and it's interesting to see the story develop. And yeah, I don't really mind. But as I say, some people may find that frustrating. So think about that before you buy this. And as you may have already been able to guess, if you're a long-term fan of the series, I've chosen this level because it's pretty much just a a nod to the first two games. Max is wearing his trusty leather jacket. He's wearing his tie. And he's in a snowy Darth City, which is like, well, it's just the basic premise for Matt's Payne 1 and 2. What I probably should have been showing you is the rest of the DM, which is set in Metsido, so it's all sunny and bright, and Matt has a beard and he has no hair, and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a big departure from the original in many ways, and the setting is definitely one of them. It's, it's nothing like 1 or 2, so this level is a nice homage to the first two. And I think I chose it more for familiar familiarity, and also it's a, it's a little level to exhibit. Because the first couple of levels are obviously full of tutorials, and I wanted to show something that wasn't spoiler, like full of spoilers. Obviously, this is a flashback, um, and also that isn't clogged up the screen with press, you know, R two to fire and everything. So I thought this was probably a good uh, a good section to show you. Yeah, so there's some. Examples of the words flashing up on the screen, and I mean, it is very stylish. It's very strange, and it's interesting why they chose to do it like this. Yeah, it works. I like it. So, is this as good as other Rockstar games? No, it's different. You know, I'm not really too sure you can categorize it in the same. Where's GT and Red Dead Redemption? Because it isn't a you know a free open world shooter. It's a it's a linear, confined third person shooter. You know, it's nothing like them. Also, another cutscene. Yeah, then you see what I mean. I killed what two people there, and now we're batting a cutscene. He's a very Rothstar s character. He's crazy. Doesn't take itself as lightly as um. Is other Rothstar DMs, it has to be said. You know, there's not really many comedy characters, there's not really many light hearted moments that I've seen so far. You know, maybe there are in later on in the DM. I've heard Matt's Pain 3 is very long, but. Yeah. It's darker. Grittier. And I liked it. Rothstar do gritty and visceral very well, so, yeah. I guess that guy's dead. I also love Matt Payne's narration. Obviously, it's the same voice actor from one and two, so it's you know fans of the series are going to really enjoy that. And it's just so just having his voice, you know, narrating everything. It's it's really good. 
As I said, it's just film noir in DM form. Now I'm gonna take these guys out, apparently. Gotta dive forward. I'm not diving as much in this footage as I normally do when I'm playing the DM. So yeah, if you don't already know as well, uh, the DM has multiplayer, which I won't be showing off because I haven't played it yet. But it is there. Uh, I'll probably do another video by probably by the end of this weekend about the multiplayer. I normally try and clap the DM before I uh, I do a multiplayer, but never mind. I believe I die here. Yes, I do. Dead. So, I can't really think of a better place to stop this video. Uh, my name's been Liam Richardson, as always, from DamnNation.co.uk. This has been Matt's Pain 3, uh, my new take on test drives. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like or leave me a comment and, you know, say if you like this new style or you don't like it. And then, no doubt, I'll be back later on. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching.